for everybody that's been asking me to do a damn Mega Force review, here's your goddamn review of fucking Mega Force. I hate this show. This show is one of the worst seasons I've ever watched, if not the worst season I've watched. And I hate that I ever, and I mean I hate that I ever put my time into watching this show. I hate that I hyped this show up because it was supposed to be the big 20th anniversary and we were going to get to see older ranger suits and older castmates come back. But fuck it. I'm just going to give you guys my thoughts on Megaforce. And this video will be titled a rant instead of a fucking review because um, this is just a pseudo review. It's only like a few things I'm really going to go over in this show. But hell, I might as well say it's a review because I'm talking about it. But it's going to be titled a fucking rant. So that's all I have to say. Let me goddamn start with this damn monstrosity of a fucking show. Megaforce to me... It's just so bad, and it's just such a misstep of a damn show. I'm going to start off with the theme song. The theme song sounds terrible. It sounds like a horrible mashup of the samurai theme we got. It just sounds terrible, and it's edited horribly. And I understand that this was the 20th anniversary, but you guys could have at least tried with the damn theme song. The motherfuckers actually play the samurai theme in the damn show because they can't tell the difference between the Megaforce and the goddamn samurai theme. That is how lazy and how half-assed that fucking theme song is. It is terrible. In my opinion, they should have used the theme song that they use during the fucking morphing sequence. That song sounds like it has some motherfucking promise. Alright, let me move on to the fucking characters. Go say one of the worst mentors in the motherfucking show. The guy just tells the rangers things, doesn't give them fucking explanations, and just gives them shit without them really earning it. See, the thing about Sordon that was good is the rangers had to actually earn shit and he didn't just reward it to their asses. And also, Sordon didn't just give the rangers advice or tell the ranger things without even trying to give them an explanation for what the fuck is going on. Oh, man hurts talking about this character. Gosei is supposedly a student of Sordon. Supposedly, because we don't really even get to find out what was his relationship with Sordon. That's just a fucking throwaway line when I sit up and I think about it. I just don't want to spend no more time on Gosei. Gosei is a shitty mentor, and Gosei <laughs> will never ever be a mentor that you see me say any good things about. Next, we're going to move on to Troy. Troy is a character that had some potential, that had a nice setup, but they didn't do shit with it. And everything was just so unexplained about this character. Like, how the fuck he goes Super Saiyan and punches Robo Knight. And also, the dreams that he has are not really expanded on. They were just a dream that he fucking had. They're not really explained. Nothing is fucking explained with Troy. You're going to hear me say nothing is explained in this show a lot because nothing is explaining this shit. Shit just happens. Troy is very boring. The actor just doesn't even seem like he likes the fucking character he's playing because um, the actor who plays Troy, what was his name? Andrew Gray. Um, he's actually a very charismatic guy. He's a very funny guy. If you've seen him at um, Power Morphicon and at Comic Cons. But the character itself it's just fucking terrible, man. And just a waste of motherfucking time. When the most memorable thing this character does, it says, don't drop our weapons. I mean, he just says, don't drop our weapons for no fucking reason. And he gets mad about it. Like, that's about the only memorable thing about this fucking character. Everything else about Troy fucking sucks. Let's move to Noah. I actually like Noah. The only two things that I didn't like they did with Noah is have him go into a fucking toxic waste site. He just walks in a toxic waste site. And the fact that he looks up the Power Rangers database on a school computer when he's trying to keep his identity a fucking secret. And it just, those are just two stupid things about the character. And also, I don't really like the second focus episode he got in Megaforce because it was the same damn focus episode he got in the first season of Megaforce. So it was a worthless, useless fucking episode. Let's move to Jake. 
Jake might be the best character out of the fucking bunch because Jake seems like the only character that they actually care to put some fucking effort into. He's the only character that has any charismatic values about himself. He can be very funny at times, and we also find out that he has a crush on Gia, even though it doesn't go anywhere. But that's more than I can say about most characters in this fucking show. At least they tried something with fucking Jake, with him being the the goofy one that's always cracking the jokes and always trying to wisecrack about situations. At least they tried with fucking Jake compared to everybody else, so I'm not going to go too hard on Jake. But what I will go hard on is motherfucking Gia. Why the hell did Gia get no focus episodes? We're told that she's this tough girl, that she's stern, that she doesn't play the bullshit, but it doesn't really go anywhere. The only thing that Gia does is kisses Jake at the end, and even that wasn't built up well. That was built up pretty half-assed too, because we don't really see them really get together or have a connection or develop any type of fucking chemistry within the show. So that kiss at the end just seemed like it was out of fucking nowhere. Like, Gia is one character to me that had some type of potential, but then they fucking threw it away with her. And then we get to Emma. What more about Emma? She likes to be outside. She likes to fucking sing. That's all I fucking know. And one thing I'm going to talk about is how Emma is complaining about getting her hair messed up when you are outside 24 fucking 7. Why the fuck do you care about your hair getting messed up in the damn helmet? Why? Why? Oh, motherfucking why? Lord. Huh. Then we get to Robo Knight who is a character that has charm to him, but we really don't get any backstory or explanation on Robo Knight either. He's just a character that has charm to him that will give you a laugh every now and then. That's all I have to say about Robo Knight. Then we get to Tenso, which is pretty much motherfucking an alpha knockoff. And then we get to the villains. Every building in this show is poorly written and incompetent except for Brock. And Brock isn't even that great of a villain. I failed to figure out why the hell is Abra Morkar over the War Star if Brock is the son of the Emperor? Why is Morkar the leader of this? Why, 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 why? And then we get the Creepox, where all we know is he doesn't like humans. That's it. It doesn't really go anywhere. And he's destroyed in like the first six or seven episodes of the show. So he's pretty much gone. And then we get to the Armada, which has no connection with Brock whatsoever. I mean, they state they have a connection, but it seems like they don't have any connection at all. And it is not explained very well within the damn show. I like to say, man... The whole entire armada just seems like worse versions of their Sentai fucking counterparts. Like, if the Gokaiju writers just wrote the basis for these characters and added nothing to them and didn't really execute these characters right. That's pretty much the armada. There's nothing unique about them. There's nothing to really say. The only two villains that are any type of interesting or Brock and Metal Alice. The way you just see Brock and Metal Alice relationship just, um, it doesn't really develop, but their relationship is really intriguing within the show, with her just being kind of like his assistant and willing to do anything and go above and beyond for him, much like Camille did for Daishi in Jungle Fear. But I do have to ask one question. How the hell is Brock switching in between all of these forms? I mean, I do like the idea of him manipulating different factions and shit, but um, he just uh, pops up in different forms with no explanation, and he calls his brother an idiot when there's been no indication that the two do not like each other out the show and if they didn't like each other it's not explained in the damn 
show. It's just random. Just random as hell. But Brock, I gotta admit, is one of the better villains of this show and intriguing. Even with all of his flaws. And I mean, Brock has a few. As I just named, I will say that he is um, one of the best villains in this whole entire TV show. And that's probably going to be the nicest thing I say about motherfucking Megaforce. Because this show is just damn terrible. Let me just continue. For one, how the hell does Gosei get access to all these older powers? Nothing is explained. And don't come in my comment section with all these goddamn fan theories and shit. I swear everybody in this community tries to use their fan theories to excuse plot holes that are in these shows. But it was not written in. So what you're saying is not canon. I have a lot of fan theories. But I do not go around the community and treat them as if they are legit. And I mean legit commentary. But... I'm off of that subject. Another thing, how does Robo Knight come back in the end? Didn't he sacrifice himself for Orion? Oh yeah, Orion. I forgot to talk about Orion. His character is so forgettable that I forgot to even mention Orion. Oh yeah, so Orion is a survivor of a falling planet and he somehow got the powers of the Silver Ranger Morpher. It's not really explained how that Morpher ended up on his planet. And also, Orion took out a whole spaceship with a fucking pebble. Like, he literally had a pebble and one of those little mini catapult things that he used to play with as a kid. Took it and took out a whole spaceship. What kind of fucking logic is that? But, okay, 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 let me stay on topic. So, Orion pretty much comes to Earth to get revenge for his falling planet. And that's pretty much it. They don't really expand on his planet. He doesn't really talk about the people of his planet. He doesn't really talk about his planet at all. He just wants revenge for it. And that's all we know. We don't know nothing else about this planet. And apparently, Ghosty has knowledge of this planet, but that isn't expanded on either. So this planet is just a random planet to me because all I know is... That Orion lived there, he got destroyed, and he wants revenge for it. That's all I know. And when Orion arrives on Earth, he doesn't have a fish out of water moment or a fish out of water type story. I mean, it would make sense with a man coming from a whole entire other planet, but they don't expand on that at all. He just adjusts his turf. And everything just seems fine, which was pretty weird to me. It's also very weird how in Ninja Steel, Brody, who has been on Earth 10 years, just adjusts to Earth and everything's fine. When Earth had changed so much from where he had been taken off of Earth. I don't understand it. I don't get it. But that's Neo Saban's logic, I guess. I, I just don't know. I don't know. So that's all there is to Orion. It's not like we've seen this plot before. It's nothing special. They don't really add nothing to it. They don't expand on it. It's as simple and as basic as it could honestly be. So I'm just going to say whatever to that. But let me get back to talking about this damn show. Also, we have unexplained Sentai suits in this show. Like, why are there pre sue Super Sentai suits in a Power Rangers anniversary show? Why? It's so disrespectful to the legacy that had been built over 20 years then to have unused Sentai suits in this show. They just appear. And they give them names at all. But they don't explain where they came from uh, it is just so mind-boggling how they just treat this like it's nothing oh yeah this video is going to be long it's already passing the 14 minute mark but i'm not finished i have to talk about the legendary battle or as fans know it the legendary letdown pretty much the legendary battle just happens every ranger from every season just appears there's no explanation, 
there's been no been no real connection built between these Bedroom Rangers and the Mega Force Rangers. Hell, they don't even bring back the Bedroom Rangers that appear in the show before the legendary battle. So it just feels so awkward and so weird to see these Bedroom Rangers who have never, ever, ever, and I mean ever, even mention the Mega Force Rangers in their mouth, acknowledge them, and treat them as if they have a close bond or relationship. I need a stronger reason for we're Power Rangers to explain to me why these Rangers put so much faith in them in this episode. These are people that you don't even really know, but you're acknowledging them? Well, okay, whatever. And I swear, man, every better ranger appearance and the legendary battle is just so lackluster. Nobody really gets any lines but Tommy, and even his lines are lackluster. Like, you guys managed to give Tommy all this stuff, but you don't give him shit in this episode. Like, you guys have already given Tommy the whole world, but you don't give him shit in this episode. It just seems just so awkward, man. It just seems like they just have that put this all together in the last minute and it's just so rushed like I think they were they just knew by then that we fucked this up let's just get this over with it's just every ranger just seems like a robot in this episode everybody says their line devoid of any emotion it feels as if the actors weren't even feeling what the hell they were doing or saying they just were like well the earth is in good hands. We trust you guys. Like the most generic, I mean the most generic lines in the history of motherfucking PR. It just felt so disconnected in this journal. And after this lackluster battle, the Rangers fly to heaven. Yeah, somebody explained to me what the hell happened at the end of the episode when the Rangers just fly up in the sky and disappear. I don't know what the hell that was, but whatever, man. Jonathan Sackor and all of the fucking writing team, you guys screwed this season up. You guys really, really left a dent in PR with this season. This was supposed to be the big 20th anniversary. This was supposed to be the biggest anniversary of all time and yet you messed it up everything was just so basic about this show the characters were basic the legendary battle was basic i mean overly basic the plot was basic the theme song was basic everything about mega force is basic nothing is unique about this garbage pile of shit now those are my thoughts about Megaforce, man. I cannot stand to even watch it again. I will never watch it again. So I went ahead and got this rant out of the way. This show tried to be MMPR. And I don't know if the writers woke up, but it was 2013. Children programming had changed so much from 1993. These kids want more from shows nowadays. You cannot produce a 90s style show nowadays. It just wouldn't work. One of my complaints about this property as a whole is it has failed to evolve. I still feel like we are stuck in this 90s campy bubble. Sure, we've had some flash in the pants that have taken this franchise above and beyond, but it's never been with consistency. It's never been consistent it seems like when they take two steps forward they take two steps back and we are in the same and i mean the same boat as we were in 1993 and this season is the biggest example of it i know samurai was a terrible season before it but at least and i mean at least some of samurai's plot points 
and characters had some competence to them. This show has no competence whatsoever. It is just idiotic from the start till the goddamn end. And that's my thoughts on Megaforce. Now, you guys keep supporting me and subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Help me reach 1K because this, and I tell y'all, this felt like I was being crucified on this episode because I had to get up here and talk about Megaforce.